ain't no defund the police. Years ago for that's an entire flat, year. That's a flat out lie. That were individuals. You can say that with a straight look I on your face. You, you're asking. I'm showing you data no, because you asked for this. No, you're First showing play. me. You won't even. <laughs> listen. You're so you, funny. You won't even listen, buddy. If there's so, anybody who you, doesn't listen, no, it's you. you listen. In this video, we are going to watch Patrick Bet David make Roland Martin look like an absolute fool. This is a perfect example of a conversational bully that is debating in bad faith and an open-minded individual that does a fantastic job of handling said conversational bully. This guy literally uses every cheap trick in the book and PBD handles it like a pro. So I'm gonna break all of that down. So without further ado, Let's get into the clips. Even within the African American community, when you when you dealt with Jim Crow, you couldn't live anywhere else. You literally could not live anywhere else. Bottom line is, if you were black and had money, and then you were black and broke, you were literally living in the same neighborhood. After Jim after Jim Crow ends with integration, what then happened? Those African Americans who were middle class of a middle class began to move away. What then began to happen was you had areas where poverty increase even more so why move away result. though why move away because if you care about the community why not stay there and change it well first of all does, it, does anybody else move what do you mean who the hell else don't move well, how do you think suburbs were but, created but wait a minute what but, do you mean how, but, how do you think white flight was created but but so it, so everybody else get to move but we can't move well, but but if you act like you care about the community no, as much guess as what? you do stay but no, there but hold on no but i'll answer your question do you know why because when african americans were living in black neighborhoods yeah. they also had economically depressed, depressed housing values and the reality is they were not able change to change it help change it are you serious yeah i am i am like, okay, I'll, hold I'll, on, I'll hold give on, you an idea. His, his are you familiar with Palmdale? I'm going to need you to be drug tested. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Do you even know today, we've done the stories in Florida, when somebody's black selling their house, the appraisers will come in and literally give them a value hundred to $300,000 less because they're black? You know that ha that's actually happened, right? You'll take one story and say that. Oh, my how, God. How you, on how many occasions has that happened? That... Are you serious? Do you do you think a message like okay? Me? Why don't you go ahead and Google? Do, do, why don't you go ahead and Google? How many times has no, no, that happened? No, 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 I believe it's no, happened. No, no, but no, how many no, times no, has no, that happened? The New York Times literally just did a yeah. story talking about the systemic racism that exists within housing appraisals. This is a fundamental problem. I'm trying to see you're you're living in a different reality. What what, what progress are you making by saying that? So, what progress? So, so what you're doing? I'm trying what, to what, end that. Okay. Do, do, do you know how inherent... Okay, hold on. You said you're Middle Eastern, right? You're trying to... Hold on. You said you're Middle Eastern, I right? I am, yes. H how would you feel? How, uh -huh. how would you feel yes. if you're selling your home? Uh -huh. You've got a home that you know. Right. And you put upgrades in it, and you know your home is worth $500,000. Yeah. And somebody comes into your home, uh -huh. and they see your photos. Right. And they see your family. And then they go back, and they go, 350000 you go, what the hell? So you tell that story. Wait, 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 it's actually out of a thousand appraisals. Oh my God. Out of a thousand appraisals. How many what times does that doing? happen? Out of a thousand pull appraisals. How many times up? does that happen? You want to pull that up? Tell you want me. him to pull that That's up? That's your world, though. I'm out of a thousand appraisals, how many times does that happen? Let's just say it, it happens. It is, a, it is a significant issue in America. Oh, my God. And when, and so, when, so, and so, wait, wait, one second, one yeah, second. And then, when the one, and then when the woman takes, when the woman, a black person yeah. should not have to remove their photos from the wall and remove black art and remove black books yeah, that, to have a white appraiser then come in and go, oh, it's actually 550. So, so, one, one second, one second, because I'm going to show you how it impacts here generationally. We go, here we go. So when you, follow me here, because this, this is housing in America. You. I'm with when you, you then get that low appraisal, uh -huh. you then right. cannot sell your house for the higher value, okay. which then means you are not then taking those proceeds and being able to invest, being able to send your kids to school. And what I'm trying to explain to you is there is a world out here that for some reason you're like living in unity world that – Ain't the real America. Oh, brother, you are. You and have I'm the trying wrong to guy. get rid of that stuff. This guy is by far the worst example of a disingenuous debater that I have 
ever seen. He literally reminds me of a gold tooth car salesman. His grift is just so obvious. And when Jordan Peterson was recently asked about debating leftist Sam Cedar, he said that he wouldn't do it because debating an ideologue is like walking through a desert. And you can see by these clips exactly what he was talking about there. There is literally no point in even trying to have a conversation with this Roland guy because he's a total ideologue and he's so close-minded. <laughs> Are you serious? Do you, do and in these clips, he is about to deny reality when reality is literally plonked in front of his face. So before we get there, let's have a look at exactly how he is a conversational bully and how you can spot these in your own life. So one thing that he does over and over and over again is he dodges the questions being asked or the topics that they're trying to go into because he's so manifestly wrong that he actually can't debate these ideas and he knows it. So instead what he does is he just goes, no, you're wrong, and then does like a personal attack and then asks an irrelevant question. I'm gonna need you to be drug tested. <laughs> Seriously, Yeah. do you even know today We've done the stories in Florida when somebody's black selling their house, the appraisers will come in and literally give them a value a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars less because they're black. You know that it ha that's actually happened, right? This is a logical fallacy known as a red herring, and he is a serial offender. And next, and this is an obvious and telltale sign, is that Roland knows he's being completely outclassed in the arena of ideas. So every single time that PBD tries to make a point, he just cuts him off and speaks over him. So, so, wait, so wait, wait, one second, one yeah, second. And then when the one, what the hell? So you tell that story. Wait, 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 I'll give you an idea. Are you from one sec, one second? And this is a very, very deliberate maneuver that is only done when somebody knows that they're losing a debate and wants to cut the other person off so that they actually can't articulate their thoughts. Furthermore, this is the total opposite of what somebody who's interested in having a good faith conversation does. In a good faith conversation, somebody will actively listen and show in their body language that they're actively listening to the person and then will try and repeat the point that that person has just made in the most accurate way possible, otherwise known as a steel man. Roland, however, much prefers the straw man approach. And another one that he does is after he's done dodging the question and changing the topic, when they call him out on it and try and steer the conversation back to normality, he just screams out, no, 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 no. And he seems to think that the more times he says no and denies reality, the less people will be able to see that what he's saying is bullshit. This is absolutely typical of a conversational bully. Somebody who wants to bully the other person into taking the conversation where they want it to go. Somebody who is intelligent and debates in good faith, however, like Patrick Bet David, will steer the conversation by listening, steel manning the other person's argument, and then posing a rebuttal and have you thought about it this way question at the end. Bad faith debaters though, talk over and derail the conversation. Lastly, Roland continuously engages in personal attacks on PBD, but this backfires horribly because PBD handles it like a champ. It's fascinating to see. So after this next clip, I'm gonna break down what exactly PBD is doing to handle himself here. So see what you pick up on, and then I'll give my thoughts after. But before we get to the clip, guys, if you don't mind taking a second to like the video, that would be fantastic. And also, if you do enjoy watching debates like a sport as I do, and if you enjoy these breakdowns, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Back to it. You have the wrong guy here. You have the I'm wrong I'm trying to guy get here. rid of it. Okay, good for you. Me and I am as well, but you have the wrong guy here. And here's what I mean by that. So when you ask the question, what do you do if they praise your house $350,000 less, right? That's your question. Okay. I don't see myself as a victim. I stopped looking at myself as a victim a long time ago. And by the way, being Armenian and Assyrian, you know what a lot of people in the Armenian community do? You know what a lot of people in the Armenian community do? They sell victimhood mentality. I'm raised with that which is the statement of mechka. I know you don't know what the word mechka means. Mechka means, oh, poor Roland, oh, poor PBD. I don't see myself as a victim. And the other part is when you use one story as an example to divide and get people even angrier because out of a thousand appraisals this happened one time, I don't think you're unifying when you say a statement like that to say, hey, this is what's taking place all the time. But going back to it, so you left because you wanted better economic situation this is, for yourself. I, this is listen to what you just said. 
again. I'm having a hard time it, listening it, to what you just so said when you're saying it's three, so uh, fundamentally flawed because when you say, "Oh my God," you see yourself as a victim. You do. No, no. You're selling and it no, as actually, a victim. No, I'm not. What I'm selling is a reality. What I'm selling is when the this is again. Since you didn't, I guess you couldn't pull it up. Okay. Oh, he did pull okay, it up. Okay. The Biden administration, the Federal Housing and Finance Agency, released 47 million appraisal reports to the public for the first time. The appraisals, which were compiled between 2013 and 2021, present evidence of a persistent, widespread practice in the home appraisal industry to give higher values to. Homes when the occupants are white and devalue them if the owners are people of color. That's such bullshit. That's oh such God. bullshit. You now, know why? Hold up. Wait. Let me tell wait, you wait, why that's up, such up. bullshit. They actually took the reports you, and showed the data, and now yeah. you call it bullshit. Of course, so, I call so, it so, bullshit. So, wait, so you so you ask for the data and the facts. No, no, no. And I, now you give your opinion first of all because you don't stop, like the facts. Bro, stop. Come on, man. Do you run a company? Yes, I do. Okay, so when you run a company, how much shit can I find in the opex? How much in the what? With OPEX. When I go into my balance sheet and I look at my expenses, my monthly expenses, what I'm paying for, yeah. rent, employees, benefits, workers' comp, I can give a number and say, we lost $280,000 this year. And it's like, oh, my God, we lost $280,000. And then I open up the balance sheet and then, boom. I'll see you, you're, you're moving your face like you don't no, know what I, I'm talking no, no, about. First of all, no, when I see a data like this, tell me the whole story. To jump to conclusion with something like this without seeing the entire story is ludicrous to make a comment like that. But analyzing this, the millions of appraisals by using census break tracks it down for as me. a proxy for neighborhoods and comparing communities with nearly identical housing stock, yeah. two researchers found that the results showed a clear correlation. The higher the proportion of white residents in each community, the higher the appraised value of individual homes. They compared similar data. See, again, you want to reject the facts. And what I'm trying to explain I, to you I, is I, this I, is I am, th I am not, I am refusing to wow. constantly have people give data without me having access to the entire thing oh, just oh, for oh, their oh, oh, own oh, wait, wait, benefit to divide so, it. So what you're saying is yeah. in order for you, you need access to the 47 million home appraisals. I'd love to, to see for yourself. I would love to see it. Okay, guess what? It's a federal agency. Follow, follow for I'd you. I'd love to see it. Follow for but you. But here's, here's, follow what? A for you. Okay, so I'd love to see it. You know why? Here, here's the part. How often do you see data being used and we don't know the whole story? Both sides. How often? Well, first of all, we see data out there but what I'm saying, I'm looking at data, actual data, yeah. and I'm also looking at a reality. And he so PBD's reactions here really tell the story, and he rightfully calls him out many times. But you can tell that Patrick noticed from the jump here that this guy was a bad faith actor. And keep in mind that Patrick Bed David built an insurance company and sold it for hundreds of millions of dollars. And he was also in the military. So he would have dealt with situations and individuals that make this look like a walk in the park. A gold tooth salesman like Roland is not going to shake Patrick. He is trained in body language and in the art of communication and has read all of the books on these matters and is genuinely an expert on this stuff. So he would have seen exactly what was going on here. Notice that instead of reacting to everything that Roland says, Patrick Bet David instead watches him very closely and removes himself from the situation emotionally. And this allows him to objectively analyze his opponent. Roland wants to turn this into a screaming match and wants to get an emotional reaction out of Pat. He wants to insult his intelligence and target his ego, but Pat doesn't get sucked in. This makes Roland look like a complete fool and allows Pat to look even more composed. And to that end, Patrick stays nice and calm and earnest the whole time. And when you juxtapose that with the fact that Roland is fidgeting, laughing at him, personal attacks, flailing his arms about, it really accentuates the difference. Next, and this is a really important one, Patrick doesn't allow Roland to grab the narrative and run a million miles in a different direction with it. And this unfortunately, because of Roland's stubbornness, makes this whole entire interview a tug of war. But it's better than being walked all over. Roland constantly tries to dodge and swerve and duck and weave the questions and change topics. But Patrick just says, nope, calls him out on it, tells him exactly what he's doing and holds him accountable. To jump to conclusion with something like this without seeing the entire story, it's ludicrous to make a comment like that. And lastly, like I said, Patrick watches him very closely and also listens very closely to his arguments. And then instead of trying to go toe to toe with him and trying to out alpha him, Patrick instead creates a very concise question. And it's a question that will unravel Roland's argument when you think about it for more than 0.9 of a second. They were not able Change to- Change it. 
help change it. Are you serious? Yeah, I am. How well, many times has no, that no, happened? No, I believe it's no, happened, no, no, but no, how no, many no, times no, has no, that happened? This short, concise question is very effective and also doesn't give Roland adequate time to cut him off, although he does still do it sometimes, which is impressive. Now, let's take a closer look at what it looks like from a scientific lens when an ideologue refuses to accept basic truths in order to not go against the agenda. Fascinating stuff. Let's get into it. African Americans have been impacted, not historically, but still in present day. And what I'm saying to you is, whether you are Democrat or Republican, I want that to change because what I want you've is had some- for, You've had 53 years. The Democrats When Republicans have had, were president the Democrats, and in charge, this, wait, they didn't change oh, wait this. Wait a minute. Democrats have been Democrats have had the black vote for 53 years. What have you done? You're for not that? even answering the question. What's that on this issue 20, right here? I, this but, issue Roland, right here you, is Democrat, you, Republican, Independent. It is a you, systemic you, American problem. You still haven't answered my basic actually, question. Actually, I, asked I asked you question. about 27 out of 30 cities. You blame the state. No, no, no. No, I answer the question. What did you say? I said to you. Yeah. You show me high crime areas. I am explaining you how they are high crime areas. And what I'm saying- None of it has to do with their policies. The What? Po high crime cities in America, none of it has to do with Democrats running And you can't cities. even name the policy. What policy? G give me three Democratic policies. The point is you can name the policy. Oh this is God. your world. It's oh right. if, if, I'm in, if I'm in the business world right and you ask me a question- well, Pat, Ending cash bail, uh, defunding the police, which is in our faces. Ain't no defund the police. The reality is you have seen a major increase- in funding of police, Democrats and, no, 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 the no, police no, two no. years ago for that's an entire flat, year. That's a flat out lie. That were individuals. You can say that with a straight look I on your face. I tell you right now, oh I have actually God. talked directly. So who who came up with defund the police? I, I, who came up with yeah. it? Activists did. Right. Activists and activists did. were Republicans or Democrats? They were activists. First of all, they hate both parties. You don't even talk oh, to them. But I do. But, but the Democrats in yeah. Congress were repeating it. No, 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 so, no, no, AOC, no, 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 all, all no. Stop, like, stop, stop, stop. AOC, who else? You said the Democrats in Congress. How many Democrats in Congress oppose defund the police? A lot. But I'm saying there were still some in Congress no, no, saying you, you it, just so you're said, repeating the you rhetoric. Just, you just said some. Hell, I could quote Louis Gohmert and some crazy stuff that he says and go, well, you know what? That's Republicans. Show the video I just emailed you. I just texted it to you. Because, okay. who because we got? Don Dem Lemon, Demo Dem Charles Barkley. Democrats haven't said defund the police at all because they would never I didn't say, say that. that. No, you said Democrats haven't said it. Activists said that. Your word. No, no. You said who created the phrase. I said it was who activists who supported, that created who supported, the phrase. Who, who came up with the concept of defunding the police? Activists did. And then which credible uh, Democrats are defunding the police? There were some Democrats. Press, no, not some. Not, so these are some heavy no, duty no, ones. No, 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 no. Make Hold it up. bigger. No, no, no. Make it bigger. How, there were, when Democrats controlled Congress, how many? votes they had. Here you go. Let, when press when, pause, Demo when Democrats control Congress, how many you votes like did they Nancy have? You like Nancy Pelosi? When Democrats control Congress, how many votes did they have? How many votes did they have? What's your point? The point pause is this it, here. Pause it so we can start from the did, beginning. Did yeah. 223 Democrats vote to defund the police? Play, press no, no, play. no, 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 no. Answer stop, the question. Stop. I yes want or you no. to see this. I want you. You're, you're asking. I'm showing you data no, because you asked for this. No, press you're play. showing me some press, just Democrat press play. who spoke on. No, not on the some. Well, the most credible ones. Health issues or policing and schools and all the rest. That perhaps we can uh, shuffle some of that money around. Suck it up. Defunding the police has to happen. We need to defund One. the police. Mayor Eric Garcetti saying, take some of the money from policing, about 150 million dollars. I applaud Eric Garcetti for doing what he's done. Not Two. only. Do we need to no, 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 no. Invest that's, that's no, that's two. No, no, that's two. So that's we only need two. to no, completely dismantle this, the Minneapolis no, that's Police two. Department. That's just so yes, defund your Same butt. person. Defund you. Yes, I support the reallocation of resources. Three. That's no, 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 that's not defund. We no, will you're taking the reallocating money. No, 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 how is that wrong? Because you're wrong. I want you to explain that to me. Yes, I support yeah, the defund movement. Three. That's the well, three. three. Oh, now, four. let me explain to you. How many more do you want me to say? No, no, no. So let me explain. So let me explain. That's five. No, it's three. No, it's five. No, it's five. So, yeah, I mean, the spirit of it. So, pause it. There's only three. Pause it. By the way, would you. Okay, hold up. Right there. What does reallocate mean? Would you like me to continue this? No, it's. No, it's. Don't spin it. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Do you understand? 
understand, do you understand that in a significant number of cities in this country right. where, where you have policing who do everything, okay? You have in some cities where the— You still are not going to acknowledge the fact that the defund the police concept was brought up by and activists. constantly— reaffirmed by some of the most powerful Democrats in America. The Speaker of the House said in America, shuffling of funds. That yeah. is not defunded. If, if you if you would have... The Vice President, Kamala Harris said reallocation. But it, that is not... But what, Ilhan Omar said not only defund, she said it. dismantle. How, if she's on, a got, member of Congress, how many stop, people got, are listening hold on, to stop, that? Stop, stop, stop. That's one member of Congress, right? Oh, but you want to let, you, let the whole thing a, play. There's a seven-minute video. You want to let got, the whole thing play? First of all, show me... Here's the deal. Show me 218 who defended that and actually voted for it to happen. Please, you can't. You know why? Stop. Because they see didn't. this is this is where credibility is lost. What are you talking about? Credibility is lost if if this a, is utterly hilarious. Defund means. Cut. Do you remember earlier when I said there's a difference between persuasion and manipulation? You can spin any argument. I'm not I, spinning. You're very good at debating. You're very good at raising your voice, interrupting all that stuff. No, You're I just, I've watched I just, I just you for hilar- years. I just think it's hilarious but what's, that, that both of you will say. But here's what well, we're going to no, do. No, no, no. When the George Rob, Floyd Justice Act. Play the entire clip. When the George clip. Floyd Justice Act failed. Play the entire clip. I literally sent this, I sent this to <laughs> Senator Tim Scott, and he didn't answer my question. When we were running for office. And I answered yes to that question. We are going to reduce funding in the police department and redirect Is that, that a money. smart move? No reduce reason. funding? These budgets should just keep growing and growing and growing. They can what did they do? We propose Police cuts is a good thing. No, it wasn't cut. He just said that. You don't even know that what Lundin did. You don't even know what she did in San Francisco. No, no, you, you, that wasn't a she. That was a guy. Million Lundin dollars Breed was speaking before her. In cuts. We're she to leave tweeting. Are cuts a good thing? No more policing, incarceration, and militarization. Depends upon the police cuts are a good thing in these communities. If, if they not donate a job. What are they saying? Oh, my God. So you're saying we so, want okay. fundamental. Right here. No, 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 no. You said to me, you said, oh, show me Republican. When Senator Tim Scott introduced his bill, okay, on police reform. This is one of the things that he did. When it failed last year, he went on Mar- Margaret Brennan's show, CBS Face the Nation. He said, the Democrats wanted to defund the police, and that was a bridge too far. In Senator Tim Scott's own bill, they actually said, in order for police to qualify for these funds, laws would have to be passed on the city or the state level. Oh, no, no, oh, excuse, excuse, oh me, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, my no, God. No, so you no, buy no, that no, into no, defund no, no, the no, police, no, wait, but we need wait, to no, reduce see, it. It's not. See right there. You won't even <laughs> You're listen. You're so funny. You, you won't even listen. Buddy, if there's so, anybody who doesn't you, listen, it's no, you. No, you won't listen. Senator Tim Scott said that they won't get the funds if laws don't get passed. When, That's the fund when the George Floyd... Listen, hey, you're no, a master no, spinner. No, no, no. If you, first of all, if you oh listen, I'm telling you what he did. He then, Ooh. a year later, calls that same thing Respect. defund the police. And I literally, and if you want to. So there we have a man who is completely and utterly refusing to concede any ground, not even an inch, and is happy to blatantly lie through his teeth to further an agenda. And this is the first that I've seen of Roland Guy. So if there is a better representation, and if this was just a bad day for him, then let me know. But it seems to me like he's just a pro-Democrat guy who refuses to say anything bad about the Democrats and just thinks that the Republicans are the devil. And that to me is the perfect example of an ideologue. If you look at both parties and you say, I will only ever vote for this party, no matter who the candidate, then you are an NPC. You have checked out of the game. There is no point in even talking politics for you because your outcome is predetermined. The idea of discussing politics and culture and ideas is to get some way closer to the truth. And the way to do that is to think critically about all ideas. And if you're so trapped in one set of ideas, then it's very, very hard to get a rounded worldview. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I hope you'll be able to spot conversational bullies a bit better now. And I also hope that you'll be able to combat that yourself in your own communication techniques. If you guys want to hit those links in the bio, check me out on all socials, on Twitter, Instagram, all those amazing places. And otherwise, if you want to watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.